Hello, I'm Raymond Hedinger, and I'm here to introduce you to the Active Python web server. The idea is to build a Python-centric web server and provide a very quick on-ramp for people at various stages of adoption. People who are brand new to the cloud, developers who are already familiar with the cloud, people who have an existing Django deployment, and enterprise uh, IT departments who are just starting to expand into the cloud arena. We'll pro provide a uh, pre-built LAMP stack, so we include uh, an operating system, Ubuntu, use N Nginx as a uh, front end for routing web traffic. Apache is the uh, primary web server, although an alternative uh, server is offered. Uh, we run on Active Python, and uh, as part of one of our, the best practices in using Python, we work within a uh, virtual environment. One of the popular web server tools is uh, Django, and that's included in the stack. Uh, the default database is uh, SQLite. Three, but we have MySQL uh, already installed if you'd like to switch over to that. And then M MCached is used for a uh, high performance uh, key value store. The fastest way to get up and running is what we call uh, direct access, and that's what we're going to talk about in this screencast. The direct access method is to fire up a AMI and to log into it directly and work on it. Uh, a good practice uh, if you're working on an AMI directly is to periodically back up and save uh, copies of the instance so that you can reboot them at will. The steps are uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, first you need to enact an Amazon account and these are the links uh, to get up and running. They have a getting started guide. I'll walk you through the uh, steps in a few moments. We'll go live and uh, just set up an account and uh, fire up an AMI and get it up and running. Okay, let's go live to the web and walk through some of the steps of getting signed up with Amazon and launching your instance. First, uh, the easiest way to uh, find a listing of Amazon Web Services is to just do a search for them. So I did a search here for Amazon Web Services. Let's start in the lower right with creating a AWS account. When I go into the account page, I use regular Amazon login. It sends me an email, I reply to it, and it generates this screen. The one that we're interested in is on line three, the Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud. It then asks you if you want to uh, subscribe. It's an easy process. It asks you to put in your credit card number, and when you, after you swipe your credit card, it will send an email to you asking you for a confirmation uh, phone number. It'll then call you, and you echo back a PIN code that it gives you. As soon as you do that, you get an email that activates your subscription and takes you to this screen. That process takes less than a minute. After uh, activating your uh, subscription, go ahead and log into Amazon using the link in the email. The email that came up for me takes me straight to the security credentials. The important part is in the lower part of the screen where it says your access keys. So my brand new access keys I've created for this demo are down here. There is the access key ID and your secret access key. I won't hit show here and so I will keep my uh, password private. If you click show, it will give you your access key and you can copy those uh, out to a file or into as environment variables so that they're easily accessed whenever you need to access the cloud. That's pretty much all it takes to get signed into uh, Amazon and, uh, to be signed up. That process for me took about five minutes. Now let's log into Amazon itself with the uh, EC2 link. Again, we can go back to the search and that is the uh, first hit on the search for Amazon Web Services. Or you can go directly to it with aws.amazon.com forward slash EC2. It has instructions for uh, signing up for the Amazon account. Go ahead and click on sign up for Amazon EC2. For me, that sent me four different emails telling me that I had signed up for several different uh, services, uh, including uh, the simple storage but also the Elastic Cloud. So it will send you four emails. The first of them is for the Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud. Having gotten your account set up with Amazon and browsed through the instances, let's go ahead and log into EC2. Let's go to sign in and use our new credentials. This will take you to the dashboard. There are several tabs, one for each of the major Amazon services. The one that we're interested in is EC2, the Elastic Cloud. And let's go to AMIs. We're going to select uh, out of all possible images. First, let's let it uh, load. Then we will narrow it down to the uh, Active Python version.
search bar initially brings up everything. So let narrow the search to Active Python, and two instances come up. There is the 10G version, which is uh, designed to be very small, easy to experiment with, uh, and loaded onto the free instance, or you can a uh, more production version. Let's pick the second one. Just above it, uh, above the checkbox, is a button that says launch. Let's go ahead and fire up the instance. In our first set of choices, in the instance details, we can pick the uh, size of the instance. In this case, let's pick a T1 micro. That's a good way to experiment and get started. Continue. It offers us other uh, instance options. Uh, let's leave those at the default. And it offers us the ability to pass metadata into our instance. Let's skip past that. Then it asks for a key pair. I have an existing pair, but let's go ahead and uh, create a new one. So select the second option, create a new key pair, set a name for it. Uh, let's say AS, active state, demo, pair. Create and download your pair. If you look at the bottom left-hand side of the screen, you'll see that when the uh, pair has been created, it downloads into your uh, download directory. So those are the keys that you will use to uh, for the SSH access into your running instance. It asks you for a security group. We'll choose a default one here, uh, but then we'll want to customize it a little bit later to at least make it uh, visible to SSH and HTTP. It sets up the firewall and it gives us a chance to uh, review all of the details. The details that we're interested in is we're starting off with a Ubuntu based uh, AMI, making a micro sized instance, and our key name is AS underscore demo underscore pair and we have a default security group. Let's go ahead and launch the instance. It tells you that your instances are now uh, launching, uh, and this can happen very quickly. I've had it take as long as a minute and uh, as short as a couple of seconds. Click on View Instances, and it takes you to the Instances tab. You can see in the top where it says the type is pending, and there is a wheel indicating that the process was still building. It's now complete, and the status is switched to running. Before looking at this instance, let's go modify the security permissions. On the left side under navigation, you'll see in the uh, fourth group, it says security groups. Let's pick on the security group and select the default security group. When I click this, it brought down the existing security permissions. Sometimes this doesn't show right away, and so you need to go up uh, to the upper right and click the refresh button uh, to get a, a clean display. Let's go ahead to the uh, selection box and add HTTP and uh, save the default settings for HTTP. Likewise, let's go ahead and add SSH access uh, and accept the defaults on port 22. With the security group selected, let's go back to the uh, instances part of the dashboard, check the checkbox for our running instance, and it will give us the uh, instance details below. Things that we expect to see, the uh, type was a T1 micro, its status is running, the key pair name is the AS underscore demo pair, all of the things that we selected when we launched, and then we look uh, down below to the uh, public DNS name. That's the important part because that's how you will access your instance. So let's go ahead and copy that and look at our live instance. So I'll open up a new tab in the browser, enter the URL, and it takes us to a running demo site supplied with the instance, and it is running on your current live instance. In the third screencast, I'll show you how to go in and uh, customize this and start loading your own web pages. But at this point, you have a live running instance. Your website is uh, world visible. Okay, now that we've seen that our instance is live and running on the web, let's actually go shell into it and uh, take control of our running instance. Okay, we fire up a terminal. The first thing we'll need to do is uh, change the permissions on our uh, keys. So let's do a change mod 0600. The keys, which are in the downloads uh, directory, under uh, as demo pair .pim, as we specified. Okay. Now SSH will accept the keys. Let's go ahead and do SSH. Let's uh, reference the key. Let's use the username of Ubuntu. 
which is the default username, and then put in the URL, making sure to not include the HTTP. And that should shell us into our running instance. So it's now live. You can see the env prefix, which tells us that we're running in a virtual environment. Let's go ahead and verify our Python is running. We'll type Python. We see that active Python 2.66 is loaded. Let's get out of that. And another part of the tour, let's go ahead and look at the log files. And change to the var log uh, directory, and we'll see that we have several choices, including the Apache 2 logs. Uh, more interesting are the Nginx logs. Let's change to the Nginx uh, directory. And let's tail the access log. And go back out to the browser. Pick one of the tabs and go back to the Nginx log and we can see that that request was uh, recorded it's in that tail. So now you know how to see the Apache logs and view the Nginx uh, access logs. Let's take a look at where the website is itself. It's in the var www directory under the demo site releases current. This structure is set up so that you can uh, perform updates in a clean manner. We do a directory listing. We see the uh, standard uh, Django files, the settings.py, uh, our templates directory, and the manage.py. Let's take a look at uh, settings.py. Here's where you can go ahead and switch it out of uh, debug mode. You can put your uh, email address and admin name. You can uh, change to different uh, types of database engine. So all the settings uh, for Django could be controlled from here. If you do change a setting, you'll want to do a, a restart. The procedure for that is to do a sudo service Apache to restart. And then we'll also want to uh, restart Nginx. Or I'm sorry, memcached. You restart that so that any changes that you've made will be flushed out of the cache. And that pretty much wraps up our, our tour of the instance. In the uh, third of the screencast, we'll actually go into how to modify the uh, website and make it your own. Just a few quick steps to get up and running. You go to Amazon, create an account, find the active Python instance, launch the instance, adjust your security uh, permissions, Pull down your key pair, launch the instance. You can see it live on the uh, on the website, and you can shell into it and take a tour around and start modifying your instance. The whole process takes about uh, ten minutes. I hope you've enjoyed it.